Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. I'm alive, video game thoughts. So I'm gonna start with a couple of the things I thought that the game would have and was somewhat disappointed to find that it didn't that it didn't. The when I read about it before I downloaded it on Steam, it you know, it, it doesn't describe the psychological games in detail. It just says, you know, you'll have to trick them, but some will call your bluff. Now, maybe I was being too optimistic, but I read that as you will have to avoid enemies and you will you'll you'll do this by tricking them into thinking that there is there are more of you than of them, like setting up, think, you know, ma making sure that some, a noise comes over here and then over here and then over here, something like that, and, and thus scare them from attacking or scare them away or something like that. I really think that that would have been really interesting to, to do and much more interesting than this. I, the, the attacks that you can't really avoid fit with this hostile, hostile world, but I feel like a stealthier approach to the enemies being there and the... Yeah, ha having to avoid getting into combat, like if... It's, yeah, especially also because it said, you know, combat is deadly, so okay, I have to avoid combat, and you know, bu bullets are hard to come by, oh, so I have to avoid shooting them, so basically I have to avoid getting into open conflict, and yeah, so I thought that I would be, yeah, tricking them like that, and I think that could have been fantastic, and it's, especially with the thing of, well, some of them aren't going to buy it, sometimes there's going to be a tough guy who's going to walk up to one of the places where there was a sound and see that it was just a mannequin that you had placed and you threw a, you know, you threw a, a rock at something else and it made a, a scary sound so they thought that, you know, something like that but, and, and then you'd have to kill that gang and it would be difficult and it would cost you these hard earned bullets and every single conflict, every time you trick them you'd be fearing that this would be a time where you'd have to spend some of these hard-earned bullets. That, I think, would have been fantastic. Now, another thing that I... This is not something I thought would be, but this is something that occurred to me that could have been very interesting. I appreciate that, you know, you have this Law of the Jungle thing with these gangs, I think it would have been really interesting if one of the only ways to get resources would be to steal from the gangs so that you're you know moving further into these moral greys and then they'd have more of a reason to fight you also and you know then, then you're like well you know I can't completely justify this but I guess I, I do have a wife and child that I'm looking for you know I Maybe I need this more than this gang does because they're all men and they can't, you know, the, the, our species can't rely on just them, something like that, you know, but no, instead it's just this, yeah, and especially with how randomly the items are placed. You know, you've, how did you find this med kit that saved my son? Is you know, the first victim you save and it's like, it was over there, yeah, it was kind of just... I think the road had broken apart and then it was down there. I mean, when I heard that she needed a med kit, I was like, I know it. I saw a, an ambulance. Okay, can I, can I bust open a window and reach my hand? No, I can't. Okay. 
maybe there's an ambulance, oh, there's an ambulance, uh, maybe there's a door, nope, okay, I guess I'll just, lower. actually, I think, yeah, that was when I was still playing on normal, before I switched to playing, to playing on easy, and I died a little later, and randomly, I found the med kit, because it's one of the first items you find, so I was surprised that it was so randomly placed. I mean, when you're on the bridge, and if you, like, walk down a certain area where, where the bridge seems to be almost, you feel like, oh, actually, do you have to slide down? I don't remember exactly, but there's, like, a, a soda there or something, water bottle. And it's like, okay, I get that this is here, because who's gonna risk getting it here, and, and when you have to go to that m military crate to get, you know, where you also get the grappling hook and such, it's, it's far up in the, you know, they, they actually mentioned that, okay, yeah, okay, there are these military crates, but where's one that hasn't already been scavenged? Makes a lot of sense, but yeah. And, and if these gangs were running around gathering a lot together, to make sure they would survive, and then you could have some thing of, you know, maybe you scare them away, or maybe you wait until they've just turned around, or some kind of thing. That would just, yeah, that, I, I would really, really love that. Now, the, I think that pretty much covers the things that I thought would be in there, or the like that I learned. I like that this explores the humanity of the, the, and, and the idea of morality in, in this kind of post-apocalyptic world. The Amazing Atheist mentioned this in one of his Let's Plays of Fallout. And, yeah, it just, you can't really talk about morality in that sort of sense in this post-apocalyptic world. There's almost no society left. I mean, it's like, it's like the Old West. Whereas, you know, we, we idolize these cowboys that would, you know, take matters into their own hands and so Of course they would. There weren't enough people. There, there was like a sheriff and a deputy and a couple of... It's not enough and people lived far apart. Today, in, in a free democratic society, so not America, okay? Well, not... almost not America, anyway. Yeah. It makes sense to talk about morality because there is a, you know, you're paying your taxes, there is a greater good, there is a, uh, yeah, there, there is a whole of, of society, and a uh, whole with a W, and this, you can either help or hurt the whole. You can do something that hurts the whole, like go on a killing spree, or you can help the whole, like build a children's hospital. And yeah, let's 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 look at that in in the post-apocalyptic world. Say one person kills a bunch of people in the post-apocalyptic world. Well, there's not a lot of food. Were these people? Let's say one of the people you kill was actually dying anyway, and he was dying of something contagious, and you don't so much kill him as you, you like, you know, you, you kill him and then you burn his body to try to get rid of the disease. Or you, you know, kill him and then toss him off, you know, toss him into one of these, you know, holes in the ground from the earthquake. That's basically, you could make an argument for that. Okay, so you killed someone, but you might have saved a lot of other people. But if you're in a society, it's like, well, there's a hospital. Let's quarantine this guy. Let's see if we can't find out how to heal him. And building a children's hospital, well, dude, we only have so many bricks. And there's a toxic storm coming in a couple of hours. We need shelter just, you know... This, this small group that we are, so you, you can't really apply the same kinds of... And I like that this doesn't really say that, you know, everyone is... Yeah, there, there isn't so much of a... You know, if you find someone you need... I mean, at the very end of the game, you literally help someone who just tried to get... Actually, wait, he... 
He was against the guys who tried to get Henry, I guess, but yeah, whatever. He is one of these guys that you've been fighting. You know, and, and you again, you have the choice. Do you want to rescue him? And you get some information for it. So, yeah, it is it is this thing of... Yeah, n no one in this world is completely good or completely evil. It's just that these baser instincts have taken over these gangs. And, you know, it makes sense that you're fighting them. I'm not arguing that. I, I would just like if you could scare them and or maybe steal from them when they weren't looking, that sort of thing, instead of just always having to take them out, you know. I mean, you don't necessarily kill all of them, some of them you just knock out with the, you know, gun to the, the ten, what's it called? Ten, whatever, temple. And, uh, actually, that's wrong. You're not allowed to bring a gun to temple. Found that out the hard way. Anyway, yeah, you... Yeah, so, so this exploration of the, you know, different moral... These more brutal people. I like that near the end of the game, you know, the, with the... Actually, middle section, when you, when you rescue Linda, when she's at the hotel, which Henry knows because... Because... You're, you know, you come across all these young women who are, like, you know, forced to be sex slaves or, you know, forced to dance for these men. And, yeah, it, they're, they're just, they, they see women and they're like, well, this is a way to survive. You know, it's, it's like children of men. The, the, you know, this one pregnant woman in this world where no one can get pregnant, you know, everybody wants her because everybody wants to be the one to, you know, we have a self-preservation drive which includes having sex and procreating and not everyone is going to be able to procreate with her, so yeah, it's, you know, that, I felt like they did that quite nicely. Now, the The, the the game brings up cannibalism, and I quite like that. I, I especially like that you don't realize right away. Like at first, you just you just hear these two people talking. Ah, oh, the meat tastes a little salty. Ah, oh, come on, you just you can do the cooking, and then ah, oh, that kid's probably hungry. You can go ahead and take some meat. It's over there, and then you walk over there, and what you find is this big hunk of, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's edible, it's been, like, cooked, preserved maybe, but it looks suspiciously like, I'm, I'm thinking it came from the chest, and then right underneath that, maybe especially, maybe you just like, you pick up the meat, which, it's, you know, in the, in the inventory it just says meat. And then you, you know, you're, you'll, you notice that what you picked it up from was basically a small, what's it called, a small cage, and indeed there's a stripped rib cage in there. There, there are bones of a rib cage, and you're like, yeah, this is this is human meat, and it makes sense because again, you, judging. Again, you can't really judge, you know, when, when you, when we look at the, the that, that, uh, the supposed bath salts cannibal guy, who, you know, ate that other guy's face, in, uh, crap, I don't remember the state, in America, we can judge that, that was clearly, you know, what, what the crap was going on there, why did he eat that guy's face? I'm not trying to make light of it. I... But what, when there are few people left and food is hard to come eat, they can't grow something. You know, you, you come about... There, of all the people you meet, there's like the one little group of people who are growing tomatoes. You know, everyone else is just... 
it can't really grow anything, so it's what you can scavenge or yeah, so and and you don't know that they killed someone to get their meat. It could have been that someone died naturally and they just said, well, you know, let's not let it go to waste. You, know, you also find rat meat there, which again, you know, yeah, if there's, if there's no other meat and the rats would be left. So yeah. But then you find that, you know, you go you walk further down that hallway and, or that, that's a subway tunnel, I think it is. And then you find these two guys with machetes, th you know, threatening. And at first I was like, are they just protecting the territory? And then I saw the, you know, then you hear the yells from behind it and you see the, the gate. And yeah, then, you know, I took him out, you know, and, and shot open the gate. And that, you know, that's, that's where you draw the line. That's, it's not okay to imprison people and then kill them and then eat them. That's, yeah, that's, that's crossing a line. So, but, but, yeah, it's... I, it, it makes sense, too, that, that cannibalism would come, you know, would do, yeah. So, so anyway. And by the way, I did not kill the two, you know, sitting at the, at the fire afterwards. I only killed the two with the machete because the two with the machete, I mean, there were several of the people around and they didn't seem scared, they just seemed disgusted with the cannibalism. So, I figure that if the two at the fire had to do with, you know, trapping people, then these other guys would also be scared of them. So, yeah. Anyway, the, the one thing, I, and I like that the game gives you that option, you know, and, and it's in fact, it's, I th I think it gives a 5% boost if you complete the game, at least on easy, if you complete the game and you did not eat any human meat. And that's where it, you know, it comes right and says, yeah, that was human meat. And so, so yeah, that, and, and I get why they try to lure you to do it with, you know, it's basically the healthiest thing you can find in the game. But that unfortunately also breaks the realism because I, I did some research and you know, as long as you don't eat the brain, you might, you, you'd be safe from like Kuru, but even if you're safe, it doesn't mean that it's gonna do your wonders. I mean, there, we human beings are not really made, I think, to, to eat our own species. We're, we're, we should eat something more different from us. You know, it, it, there are different benefits to eating the meat of different animals. And yeah, just eating something... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to go too much into the detail because it was a while ago since I took biology. But yeah, it, there is... It wouldn't help that much, and it's a little unfortunate that it's unrealistic. I feel, I wish that they had just done it a different way, tried to lure you into it. Now, the some of the first-person shooter aspects, the the body armor, it's is. It's a lot like, the, the fact that you can wear it, I mean, is a lot like the, excuse me, the, how many healing items, excuse me, there are. I mean, the ones that don't, excuse me, restore stamina. Those make a lot of sense. But, I'm, I'm just like, am I really supposed to take slashes? I mean, I, excuse me, I, I played on easy and I pretty much avoided every single slash I possibly could the entire game because it and not just because I am obnoxiously pedantic about not wanting to waste anything in a video game this is one of the few games that I actually really cater to that you know with the, especially with the bullets but also just because well it kills you really fast it I mean if you get
get shot twice or slashed at like thrice, you're dead. So why would I really want body armor or all these healing items that give health? It just it's more an issue of bullets and yeah, if if they're close enough to slash at you, they're probably quote unquote too close to shoot. If there's more than one of them or if the or perhaps rather two of them yeah, so that really didn't seem yeah. The the gas mask, however, I do think was a good idea and I I mentioned in the review that some of these things, you know, when you get the grappling hook, you can travel at least by paths. You can take shortcuts, if nothing else. And I, I think it opens up a new path, so they didn't need to guide you that much. And the gas mask also means that you can go places you wouldn't have been able to before, even if they hadn't prevented you from going. I mean, if you walk down a street and you're like, okay, I can't even see where I could climb up, I, I just, I can't go this way, so going back, you know, that's interesting. When the player of their own accord makes a decision like that, I clearly can't go here yet, or I clearly can't go here, this is too dangerous for me. That would be really interesting. They could also do that with, like, if, if you were to steal from the gangs, once you get the bow, then you can take out the guards silently without anyone else noticing. So then you can get into the camps that really have goods, where the camps that don't really have guards, you just wait until everyone's asleep. So, yeah. You know, something like that. And, and yeah. Now, the... Which might also mean you'd have to hide out really close to the camp, to where you could see if they're still awake or not. And you'd be hiding there for a long time, and you'd have to bring something to keep, you know, your, your health up, maybe there, or something, I don't know, I, I just think that would be really cool. But anyway, I will say that the bow is also not something that feels too first-person shooter-ish. It's, it's quite interesting, especially because for a long time, I don't know if there were more than two arrows, but I never found more than two. And the second one I only found there at the end. The actual... What's it called? Yeah, the, the ability to shoot with the bow as many times as you want, but once you've shot, you have to retrieve the arrow before you can fire it again. That's quite interesting. And it's also something that the others can't use against you. Like, if you kill the gunman, you have to make sure that the other guys don't pick up the gun. You have to draw your gun really quickly and, you know, keep them away from the gun. Keep them... You know, that was also something I really loved. I would love to see that in more games. That once you've shot the guy with the gun, you have to point your gun to the others and tell them to back away. From the gun and then you go over and pick up the gun and then you can back away from them again and all this while knowing that any second now you know one of these guys is going to try to call my bluff and force me to shoot that's really really cool but yeah the, with the bow i experienced a lot of times shooting one guy and then using the, the pistol to like have other guys back up or maybe just you know, no weapon, just run and try to run far enough away from them that I could get to back to the arrow, pick it up, and then, you know, backing away from a guy, shoot, or, yeah, whatever, you know, really quickly shoot the next guy, and then pick up the arrow and shoot the next guy. And it just felt really awkward to where it seems like there should have been a more logical solution, because if I was actually in that situation, I wouldn't be doing that. It's, it's, I'm, I'm exploiting the game, you might say, you know, I'm exploiting the fact that they're not going to, as they probably would real life in that situation, try to, what's it called? Crap, yeah, try, try to cut off my paths, you know. Of, of escape, you know, okay, so there are maybe regular people, but they're still, you know, what's it called? They're still a gang, so they must have some kind of, 
Yeah, I, I, I figure they would at least, at least some, maybe just the tougher ones would. But I think that, yeah, that leaves me with just the plot. Now, the... Basically, the... Well, actually, I should cover the anticlimax first. So, you, you shoot these couple of guys, you know, I, I just used my bow on those last two gunmen. It, it wasn't difficult, uh, you know, I was just, you know, I climbed up, oh, there's two gunmen, I'll, you know, bow and bow, and that was it, and yeah. And then I go and find me again, and that's it. The, you know, and, oh, the water is rising because we needed something here for the end, and it's just, it doesn't even lead to any difficult climbing. You know, you just do a couple of running jumps, and then you're over, and that's it. But yeah, and then, you know, it's like, oh, I'm gonna stay. I, did, we, did anybody really believe that he was going to, you know, and, and as, as the game progressed, it got more and more obvious that over the course of the game, you weren't going to find the Julian Mary, you know. I do like the sort of foreboding, the, you know, they keep cutting back to this camera where he's recorded something for her, and we know that it's being played back because that was the first thing we saw. We see a young woman playing it back, and, you know, over the course of the game at least, you're going to figure out that that's Julie, of course. Actually, I don't remember if we saw that it was a young woman, but we definitely saw someone doing that, so yeah. And I do like that you, you have a sort of sense of this isn't going to end well, somewhat. You know, although we don't know for sure if, you know, if the protagonist and or Henry are dead, but yeah, there's, there's definitely a possibility. And definitely Julie found his equipment and she's crying there at the end, so it seems likely that the protagonist, you know, has died and she just held back her tears until she had watched the entire video. It just... Yeah, it's it's fine, I guess, but it's we've seen this sort of thing before, and if maybe the... If they had really built up the relationship, I feel like the... the we, we get a sense that Linda doesn't really trust, you know, any, any man when we meet her at the hotel. She, she does come into trusting the protagonist quite quickly, though, and hides. At one point, she literally hid by just standing off to the side while I fought the bad guys. I, I'm not saying she should join in. I'm saying, why don't they spot her? It, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Henry is, you know, it takes him a while to really trust you. At first he's like, okay, listen, just give me the kid back and you'll get these, you know, I'll, I'll get you some good stuff. It just, just please don't hurt her. And, you know, the protagonist, you know, brings her back and, and, you know, after doing several favors for Henry, finally he trusts the protagonist. And, you know, there, there is this, and, and it's nice that, you know, it's not... May's father, it, you know, Henry, the, you know, Linda is a nurse, or was a nurse, and she helped Henry before the event, and then, you know, yeah, when, and, and so they, they had sort of a connection, they already knew each other and trusted each other, and so they helped each other, so that was a good, you know, May, she's basically your average little kid, she did. It's not a bad character. She she adds a lot of humanity to it, which is is really good. As as to some of the other survivors, the the ones you just help. But yeah, the protagonist, he's just such a blank slate. And we know nothing about Mary or Julie. We don't even know what Julie looks like, except that she apparently is about the same age as May. But I feel like if they had really tied it together and really built up this relationship, like if 
the if along the way does now I think we may talk about her situation and what it was like in the past, but I'm not sure the protagonist talks that much about Julie, for example. But but yeah, let's say if every time the you know every time you rescued someone, the protagonist would really reveal something that was that, that really helps you sympathize with him and them, their relationship. The only thing we know about them is their their names and I think the protagonist has a name, I just don't remember it because it's almost never mentioned, but anyway, and the fact that they split up, he moved out to the East Coast. And if they had really built this up, if there had been a lot of emotional weight to the relationship, and you were really thinking, man, I have to get them back together, I have to find this woman, and there was like some sort of detail that he mentioned at some point that, I don't know, she... She has this, you know, he, he gave her this, this piece of jewel, this, this pendant, and she, you know, she promised to never, you know, always keep it with her. And then near the end of the game, the protagonist is in a situation where it, to someone else, might look like he's doing something horrible. And someone grabs him from behind, you know, strangling him with, like, this short little string kind of thing, and just as he's dying, we see this from his point of view, you know, just as he's dying, he looks down and sees the pendant, and then the, you know, the screen turn, you know, fades completely to black, and maybe we hear Julie's, Mary's, Julie's voice, and it's been established early. We we heard actually yeah we heard it with the with the letter and and she screams no no I thought you were you know something like that so so it has some real tragedy where th there is some kind of you know and they they haven't seen each other for a while so maybe he looks different or he he's wearing clothes that the gang wore because it's really cold and they had they they had you know stolen all the good jackets something. To where there was really something compelling. I mean, basically what we have is that a character we know nothing about has apparently died, and another character we know nothing about has found him, and she's sad about it. And we know that they like loved each other, but it's so bare bones, we don't hear any details. It's just this thing, oh, I forgive you, I just hope you come back. And I mean, I thought that it maybe would be early on when he's like, I just have to get back to the apartment. And he gets back to the apartment, and he finds the, this letter, and he's like, ah, I'm so stupid, how could I think they'd still be here? And, you know, it's just... But then you don't really... It doesn't really get fleshed out, and you don't really feel a connection to this... I... I suppose I shouldn't spoil. I what I will say is that Ubisoft has pulled this off before, where they really build up what a character is like, and then the character returns really unexpectedly, and it really has you know some some impact to the to to the player. So it just. Yeah, they, they used to do this thing of really making you sympathize with their protagonist. When, when you play the, the Prince of Persia games, you really desperately want the prince to succeed and get a name, or at least change it into a symbol, something. But, but you really want him to succeed because you understand him and you understand why this is so important to him. And here they just really don't do that. And I, I feel like it really 
hurt the game a lot. I think that pretty much takes care of everything I wanted to say. Yes. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.